Hi and welcome back to my pajamas vlog. This is the first series called How to Change the World Without Dying Trying. This is the first chapter called Hiding Your Room. And uh, we're going to try to define what does changing the world really means. Now, I uh, just want uh, to remind you that this is just my perspective, but it's really important is for you to think about it and then respond. For some ideas of how to do this, please refer to my introductory video afterwards. Now, when you hear changing the world, what comes up to your mind? Maybe you can recall some of the brands and companies that have changed the way we live. Or maybe you think about religions and their fights and struggles and the way they have created wars and stuff. Definitely, I'm sure you're going to think of people. People that have changed the world, that have made a difference. Well, talking about this, I prefer to think about two little guys that I, I believe uh, represent this concept very well. And these are Pinky and the Brain. Pinky is all the time dreaming with cheese and happiness for everyone, and Brain is trying to take over the world through mass domination. Um, this leads us to our first thought about changing the world, which is it can be changed for the good or it can be changed for the bad. Yeah, um, some of the people we talk about, we showed you their faces, have changed for the good or for the bad, sometimes unintentionally, sometimes intentionally. But here, for simplicity purposes, we are going to assume that each time we refer to changing the world, it's changing it for the good. Now, second thought. Why do we need to change the world? Isn't it okay the way it is right now? I don't think so. I think that everyone needs to accept that the world has issues. And as long as the world has issues, there's something to change for the good. Now, uh, to further explain what do I mean by the word issues, I need to introduce my first scientifically fancy word here. And it is entropy. Yeah, this is the part where everyone says, what? And I repeat, I said entropy. Technically, entropy refers to the level of disorder found in any dynamic process. But in English, uh, this only means that if you don't put enough effort into something to order it, it will just naturally tend to disorder itself. For instance, that spoiled kid of your neighbors, the one that's always whining and having tantrums, that kid has a high level of entropy because their parents have not put enough discipline and energy into him to put him in order. Still not clear? Well, uh, I'll give you a very simple example. See my room? I just cleaned it today. You see? But let's see what happens if I don't clean it for a few days. You see, my room started with a low level of entropy, and now it has a high level of entropy. To turn those, those levels down again, I need to put some ordering efforts into it, just like this.
So, my premise is that the world's issues are nothing but the natural tendency for human hearts for higher levels of disorder or entropy, and that changing the world for the good really means to put some positive energy into these levels of entropy, some ordering energy to decrease them as much as possible to get rid of them. Now, when we think of the people that have changed the world for good, like the ones we saw a while ago, uh, we can say that they made these isolated efforts to make a difference in this world. They didn't plan it strategically. They didn't think, I'm going to change the world, and then they suddenly do it. Some of them even did it unconsciously. I think, I believe that changing the world, to really change the world, to really set a mechanism of entropy fighting, we need to go a little further, not just let ourselves go with the flow of our destinies. Remember Pinky and the Brain? Uh, or Brain and Pinky? Uh, well, whatever. Pinky's good, but he's kind of stupid. And Brain is bad, but he's strategic and focused. I believe that yes, we need to act to change the world following Pinky's spirit, but we also need to think a little bit with Brain's brain. Just think about it. How much time will it take until the flow of destiny will naturally lead us to the abolition of entropy? It's not possible, because the definition of entropy is the natural tendency of our human hearts to corrupt. So, we need to put strategic and focused efforts into reversing this entropy process. That's why I finally define changing the world as establishing a worldwide mechanism of entropy reversion in this world. If our human hearts are reversed in their process of entropy, then this world is really changing for the good. Now, this is what I think. But what do you think?